Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. We've got the usual suspects today on this week's roundtable, the technician, Eric Peterson. Eric, how are you? I'm good. Good to see you. We got Bearland, Aaron Williams. Bearland, how are you doing? Doing great. How are you? Great. Great, great, great to have you. We've got the most feared woman in the country, the terrorist hunter, Mimi Schmidt. Mimi, how are you? I'm doing great. I'm all excited about boot camp, although everyone won't hear it until the week after, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to assume that we had a great boot camp and that we're all exhausted. Yep. So, yeah, but if you don't want to be exhausted, you're just going to feed off the energy of the Zen master. <laughs> Breathe in the mailing. <laughs> Breathe out the marketing. Mike Zeno, Mike, how are you? I'm doing wonderful, Mark. It's great to be here. It's great to see you. I like those uh, new beats, too. I'm rocking them. That's right. That's right. You know who, uh, who likes those beats? No. It's the notorious Tate Litchfield. I love it <laughs> when you call me Big Papa. Tate, how are you? I'm great. Yeah, doing well. Thanks. Good to see you. Good to see you. Um, today's podcast is sponsored by Lots. Looking over Tate's shoulder, Go to thelandgeek.com forward slash lots to learn more. Also, Flight School Live. Go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Schedule a call with Mike and Scott. And, of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't properly introduce Scott Todd, who's back on the roundtable. Not that he's ever left. You know him. You love him. ScottTodd.net, landmoto.com. And how to automate those Craigslist and Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. I was, I was trying to like rack my brain. Like, did I miss something or like, was I not on here? But I think I was here. You were here. It's just my way of getting back at you for all the cheesecake jokes. So. <sighs> are we going to bring back the cheesecake factory already? Please no. Like let's that. keep going. Let's keep going. Let's just keep. Let's just keep moving forward. So I've got a new course. It's it's complete, but I think this roundtable podcast is really going to be the the cherry on top, the proper way to wholesale a deal. If you're a buyer and a seller, now my course, which is a free course that's coming out, is how to double your money, twenty one days or less. And wholesaling has a lot of advantages because you don't have to get a list. You don't have to scrub a list. You don't have the price list. That's already eliminated. You just go to the wholesaler who's already done all this hard work. Then you buy it from the wholesaler whom will learn today, better leave enough meat on that bone for you as the wholesaler to make money. And then as you're the seller, selling it the quickest way to sell it as well. So the course goes through all these pieces buying it right, doing your due diligence, trust but verify your wholesaler, and then how to quickly sell it 21 days or less, double your money. Eric Peterson, let's just start with you. As far as buying wholesale goes, what would be your advice to somebody who's just getting started, they want to double their money? Okay, so this is for the buyer side. So I'm, I'm the wholesaler. I'm selling the property to them. Um, what they should expect is number one, I did my due diligence, but you need to go out and do your own due diligence. Okay. Um, you need to trust, but verify. So if you're using the land geek VAs, give them that property, have them do the due diligence on it. Um, they need to um, verify the taxes on the property and inquire uh, with the wholesaler to ensure that they're going to deed that property to them with the taxes paid up to current. Um, that's kind of the expected practice that the wholesaler would take care of any back taxes unless they're telling you that up front. You know, hey, there's $500 of back taxes on this property. Um, they're going to transfer with the property. Otherwise, the wholesaler should take care of that. Um, the paperwork. The wholesaler is going to do the paperwork. They're going to ask you how you want that property deeded. Um, and they'll fill out the, the new deed. And if there's a supporting state specific form, they should fill that out as well. 
um, as the wholesaler, they should then reach out to the buyer and have them confirm the information on the deed. Uh, when you get that deed to look at and that TD 1000 or state specific form, whatever it might be, um, as the buyer, you should be checking your information, making sure your name is correct, your business name, your address, things like that. The parcel number is, is the one that you're buying. Um, all those kinds of things you should be verifying before that wholesaler goes and signs and notarizes that deed and records it for you. That's the last step of the process. Um, the wholesaler is going to um, record that, that signed and notarized deed for you and then provide a copy of that finished deed. Um, that's kind of the standard practice that I would expect to have. Um, you know, that's, that's pretty much how I work, I guess. Uh, the only other thing I would add is, um, you know, if you're buying wholesale, it's okay to try to, neg to negotiate. However, um, you need to do that before you put money down on the property. So if the wholesaler is accepting a down payment to lock up that property, don't pay that down payment and then, you know, come the next day and say, well, I know you're asking 2000, but would you take 1800? You know, um, if, if you want to do that, do it beforehand. Maybe the wholesaler will agree. Maybe they won't, but um, it's important to do that before you lock up the deal. Mike Zana, what do you want to add to that? I don't know. That was pretty inclusive, Mark. That was, <laughs> I mean, he covered everything. And, uh, Sounds like there might have been a personal experience there at the end. Or someone might have tried to <laughs> pay and then, uh, uh, you know, ask him for a better deal. But yeah, I always tell people you got to treat it like an accepted offer, right? So if you're the one uh, buying the property, treat it like an accepted offer. Do your due diligence, as are uh, clearly uh, stated. And yeah, I mean it's it's a fluid process. The more you do, the better you get. Just like uh, our whole business is rinse and repeat, right? So so isn't uh, wholesale. Same thing, rinse and repeat. Um, I think that, uh, you know, he basically covered everything, really. It's just, you know, there's some intricacies in there because, um, you know, people, in terms of how you're going to, I guess, if you're looking at how to uh, price it because you're, you're the one that's going to sell it, well, you got to know your market. you got to know your comps, and um, you'll learn very quickly if your price too high because nobody will buy it, <laughs> you know. And then, you know, there, I think there's an ethical component. you got to leave meat on the bone. We always say that, right? you got to have – have it so that uh, the person can almost double their money cash, but they could definitely make three, four hundred percent terms, maybe more. And then you got to be comfortable with it. I remember uh, in the beginning, uh, well, people, you know, th the hardest part is to kind of divorce yourself from the fact that these people are going to make a lot of money, right? And you're going to, you can't look back and say, well, geez, wow, I feel, you know, you want them to make money and you want them to be excited. I remember someone bought for me and they were like, well, geez, I, I didn't want to tell you how much I made. I'm like, that's great. You want to buy a couple more? <laughs> like, you want them to make money because uh, they're, they're, they're going to come back. You know, there's no use in really being a wholesaler who wholesales one property. Uh, you know, what's the point? You know, if you really gouge somebody and then they never come back, that's not good. So there's a lot of intricacies, Mark, but I don't know. I think the basics, Eric definitely covered them all. Taylor Litchfield, thoughts? I mean, I buy a lot of land wholesale a lot of it. And I can tell you what my main pet peeves are. You know, it's when I, when I, somebody will say like, Hey, I've got wholesale land for sale. And I'll say, great, send me it over. Let me take a look at it. And I'll ask what the price is. And they'll say, well, make me an offer. It's like, you don't want me to make an offer. Cause I'm going to make an offer of what I would pay for this. You know, uh, if I were buying it direct from the seller. So I think it's important to have a price, um, listed, provide all of the information that I need in order to make my decision quickly. So GPS coordinates, you know, APN, a correct legal description. Um, if you have some comps or any other basic information, that all helps speed up the process. If you're trying to wholesale some property, your goal needs to be to sell these quickly and uh, do whatever you can do to make moving that inventory easy. So, you know, don't, don't try to change the price. I tried to buy some property from a guy the other day and I told him which ones I wanted, but I told him I wasn't going to buy it until I had the land geek VAs do due diligence on it because I'd never worked with him before. And he said, yeah, no problem. The next day he emailed me back and said, Oh, I sold those. And it's like, all right, well, that's kind of not cool. Cause I said I wanted them and not sure I want those other five either now because you sold those out from under me. I mean, you can't give me a day or two or 
the problem could have been resolved if he had done or had been willing to share his due diligence, which he wasn't. So that was kind of, kind of fishy. So um, those are some of my big pet peeves, but Hey, you know, there's plenty of uh, wholesalers out there and I love to buy wholesale land. I absolutely love it. I, I think it cuts out a lot of the work and a lot of the middleman and you just get straight to uh, marketing, which is fun. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one, one of the craziest deals I ever did was with a wholesaler and, and basically he was like, look, if you don't buy this, I'm going to go to this guy that I know would ruin the market. So I quickly did due diligence. I missed a bunch of stuff. And so you don't want to ever feel pressured, even though the price is right necessarily to, to close too quickly and, you know, take your time. Deals are like the bus. There's always another one down the, the road. Scott Todd, what's sort of the, the rules that you have as far as, you know, right before you're going to going to buy wholesale? Well, essentially, you know, like, like it's been said, I want to be able to double my money, right? I, I need to be able, when I pay it, I need to be able to double my money on the cash, not the term. Someone can't come in and say, well, you know, it sells for 4,000 on terms or 3,000 on cash. So I want the $2,000. Well, that leaves me no, no room, no room for negotiation. It kind of puts me into a, a bottle. The other, the other thing is that, you know, so, so that's one piece on, on the buying side is that, you know, you got to leave room. You got to know the pricing because I'm coming to you. You're coming to me to ask me to buy. And essentially I might ask you like, okay, well, what's the retail price of this? And it, it's always nice when someone can give me the comps because as a wholesaler, your job is to make it easy for me, right? Like that's one of the reasons why I'm paying you a premium. I'm paying you a premium over what I could buy it because you're, you're like the easy button for me. So you should be able to tell me, Hey, here's the comps. Here's, in fact, here's proof. Here's, here's some links on Landmoto. Great. Those are always nice. Uh, you know, here's, here's uh, the due diligence. Here's some work that I did. Here's a marketing package. Great. You're, now you're adding value to the transaction as opposed to, oh, here's a property. And, and you think that the transaction alone has value. It doesn't. So essentially add value to the transaction. And that's what you're getting paid for. You're getting paid to do something. I think that it's uh, like Tate said, I think it's wrong when, when someone comes to you and they say, Hey, listen, I, I want to sell this wholesale. You're like, okay, great. Um, you know, I need a couple of days and then, then they get antsy or they get an offer from somebody else. The next thing you know, they bolt and you have spent time and money to do due diligence or to get ready. And then they're, then they're gone. All right. Like, the, Hey, I got an offer from somebody else. Okay. Well, I just spent, you know, like 30 bucks or 50 bucks doing due diligence on you on your behalf. And essentially you're going to go to somebody else because maybe they offered you a little bit more or something. Well, then you should have gone there first, right? Like lesson learned, add them to your buyer's list and, and do it next time. But when you say you're going to do the deal, do the deal, be like, be someone that, that, you know, that you're trustworthy. And if you're buying wholesale, well then again, the same rules apply in reverse, right? Like, yeah, you got to be able to double your money. So you want to buy it right. Essentially, when you're buying wholesale, you know, essentially what you should be, what you should understand is that if you say you're going to buy it, you buy it. I mean, I know for a, for a fact that like I've had someone buy a wholesale property from me and guess what? They, they returned it. They're like, hey, uh, I really can't sell it. So I want my money back. I'm like, that's not cool. You bought the property. You're an investor now. You're, this is not preschool. This is big boy school. You're an investor. You made a decision. Now you need to figure out how to sell it. Well, I just want my money back. Well, why? Like I gave it to you at a discount. I mean, don't get me wrong. I gave them their money back, but guess oh, what? I, oh, I, I wouldn't have. Well, <laughs> I would have Scott Todd. I'm like, look, this is wholesale. You go to Nordstrom Rack, all sales are final. That's why you're getting such a good deal at Nordstrom Rack. You don't want that? You want to have a return? You want a return policy? Go to Nordstrom. Pay 300% more. <laughs> okay. Well, I didn't want to deal with them. So I gave them their money back and uh, they, they were off to the races and that was it. But that's not cool, right? Like it's not cool. Figure it out. Work it out. Sell it. You know, that's really the thing is that um, you, you, you got to – you know, you got to keep moving your feet. We talk about this, right? Like you got to keep moving forward. And yeah, you know what? You may not know how to solve the problem right now. You got to stop sometimes and really dig, dig deep because the success that you want is going to come to people who really want it. If you don't really want it, the world's going to know it. And like, 
let's go to someone who really wants the success. So, yeah, you know, yeah. essentially that's, that's kind of the rules is that be cool. You know, if you're, if you're, I mean, I actually had someone in, in a flight school class once, Mark, that they really got freaked out because they sold land. Uh, they were buying land wholesale. They were buying the land. No, I'm sorry. They sold the land. They sold the land. The, uh, they transferred the deed. And then they, then they never heard back from the person who was buying it. And they're like, hey, w- what's going on? And then it's like quiet crickets, like nothing. And it freaked them out. It freaked them out because it was their first transaction and they were, they were selling this land. They transferred, they thought that they had been hosed. And finally they get in touch with a person by text and the person's like, who is this again? And I'm like, what? You're doing a transaction with somebody, especially on a wholesale deal. You need to communicate more than anything. You need to communicate because this is, this is like the rap, the world of rapid, rapid fire land investing. Do it, do the deal, communicate. Hey, this is what's going on. White glove service, get out and, and do it again. But you know, if, if you're going to go missing on somebody when they, when they transfer the land to you, you're not going to pay them. You're going to freak people out and you're going to get a bad reputation in the community. Don't, don't be that person. Yeah, absolutely. So in, in my course, I'm going through and showing people how I buy wholesale or the way to do it. So I'm going on landmoto.com and I'm looking at, okay, here's the retail price. And just divide by two. And then I'm like, okay, now contact the seller. Now the seller may or may not sell to you wholesale, but it doesn't cost you anything to find out. So just for fun, I emailed uh, Jen and Tyler, the land duo. And I'm saying, hey, would you take, they had it listed for five grand. I'm like, hi, would you take 2,500 for this property just as sort of a, a case study? And she emails me back. She's like, okay, yeah. She's like, here's my, you know, my checkout link. Go ahead and put the $2,500. I was like, no, 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 no. You're, you, I watched this on this retail. I was just doing this for, you know, a case study. And I started thinking to myself, well, maybe I should buy it. Like, okay. But because they're coaching clients, I didn't feel like it was the right thing to do necessarily. But it, it just goes to show you like, you know, like, like honestly, I think Tate Litchfield is the perfect example of, of the, uh, of what life is like in the land business. You're just fishing, just keep fishing, right? Sometimes you're going to catch a 12 pounder. Sometimes you might get nothing that day, but you just keep going out there, keep fishing. And Mark, no one's going to accept the offer. I got to tell you this story about my last fishing trip. So I'm, I'm out there middle of nowhere and I meet this guy and you know, we're out in the middle of the ocean and the ray, sun is hot. So normally you're wearing kind of like a long sleeve shirt to keep the sun off you and a hat and, you know, either shorts or a pair of pants, water wicking pants. And this guy's out there wearing a basketball jersey and a pair of like Hawaiian swim trunk bottoms. And, uh, you know, after two or three days looking at him, I'm like, all right, man, you got, what's the deal behind the basketball jersey? And he said, it was a, a James Harden jersey. You know the guy? Sure, the he, beard. Yeah, yeah. He goes, I fish like James Harden plays basketball. I was like, uh, I don't know what you mean. He's like, I just keep shooting. I just keep catch, casting all day long. And eventually, I know that I'm going to make it happen. So, yeah. Got to keep fishing. Like, yeah, you got to show up. 80% of the success in life is showing up. You got to keep – you got to keep – you know, casting, shooting. It's a numbers game. So let's go to Bearland, Aaron, and Mimi, and let's talk about the other side of the transaction. So now we know how to buy wholesale, but how do we quickly double our money and sell it? Bearland, Aaron, what, is, what are your thoughts? Well, I guess you have to start off knowing your market pretty well, um, because that means you have to be able to buy that property right. Um, you know, you can't, uh, you know, there's certain certain properties that you may buy that are kind of going to be something that you need to retail. Maybe they have a lot of back taxes, um, but the deal still makes some sense. But that's not necessarily going to be a property eligible for whole, wholesale, you know, because you're just not going to make it work. And then you're going to be one of those people that are trying to wholesale a property with no meat on the bone because you still need to make back what you know, you put into it in a little bit of profit, but unfortunately that squeezes the other end too tight. Um, so assuming you can buy it right, you know, um, 
then you want to, you know, we've got a great community of a lot of people who are, you know, educated correctly. So you've got a, you know, a pretty good market to be able to sell that. And there's different ways, um, different, you know, ways you can go buy it. You can go, you can put a wholesale price on land moto. Um, you know, you can offer oh, it. To- we, I, I, we've already bought it wholesale. So now oh. we're selling it now retail. Yeah. Oh, so post purchase retail. Post purchase. Right. Like, so I already bought it wholesale. Now I'm going to sell okay. it retail to the new buyer. Okay. So at that point to me, it's not any different than, you know, any other. I mean, I know my margin's going to be smaller than if I had purchased it, but I'm going to put it out there and I'm going to, um, as soon as I have an agreement with the person I bought it from or it's deeded, you know, whatever, I'm going to start pre-marketing that property. I'm going to send it out to my buyer's list and, um, um, you know, we're going to get it in the market rotation and it's going to go, you know, it's going to be priced the same as anything I had bought. I just know my margin's a little smaller, but the nice thing is I, I can speed up the, um, the entire process a little bit because it didn't involve, you know, the first half. So um, even though my margins are smaller, um, I can add a little bit of speed to that money um, just because, you know, there was less time involved in, in the purchase end of it. So, you know, I'm going to put it out for terms. I'm going to put it out for cash sale um, and rinse and repeat. I mean, there's not much, not much different. Um, The only thing I would say though is um, if the person presented photos to me so I could see the land, that sort of thing, or certain marketing materials, um, I think it's fair to ask, you know, if you're allowed to use that, you know, like, um, well, let, let's ask you Mike. Know, I mean, Mike, when you wholesale you know, a deal, mm-hmm. you allow your wholesaler to use your maps, to use all your material that you're providing them for due diligence. Of course, I'm encouraging it. I want them to sell it so they buy more. Absolutely. Yeah, Mike was the first person that I wholesale that I bought from, and he's been doing it so much. I, he spoiled me, and so I thought when I bought other wholesale, wholesale deals that it would be the same experience, right? And I, I learned quickly that it wasn't the case. <laughs> so um, some tips I would suggest, make sure if you're buying a wholesale deal that the seller sends you draft deeds, draft TD-1000s, whatever supporting documents required before the transaction is complete, make sure they're doing those for you. And I've actually had a person, I taught his VA how to create a deed with multiple properties on it to save the filing fees, right? You file one deed as opposed to two or three. And then he charged me a document fee. So as a wholesaler, you shouldn't be charging other investors. Documents, Somebody, right? Uh, so, I would have stopped the deal right then and there. I'm like, oh, <laughs> no, I could. Yeah. So, um, yeah, as a seller or as a buyer, do not pay any doc fees between, you know, from a wholesaler. Another did, tip. Uh, Mimi, did you not tell him, do you know who I am? Well, I wasn't <laughs> at the time. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, say, and I completely agree with uh, keeping your word. If you, if you make a deal with somebody, follow through with it. Um, I, I've had that happen a couple of times. And um, I even had somebody recently say, well, send me a check. I said, okay. And the next day he's like, I'm not going to do the deal with you because um, on Facebook, I can get the money almost immediately. And I was, I'm the number one proponent of paying for wholesale deals on Facebook. I was only going to pay you a check because you asked me to. So I uh, recommend paying for wholesale deals on Facebook. Um, save yourself fees. Um, I, the only thing different when I'm going to sell a wholesale deal is I always check my yields, right? Since my margin is going to be yes or less, I check my yield on the financial calculator to make sure it's still within my allowable, you know, my okay range. And then everything else is exactly the same. Same okay. cash price, same term price. Yeah, I mean, I, I would make the argument that in today's market, the fastest way now to sell is going to be Facebook for what we call like the wholetailing model. You buy wholesale and you sell retail. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's going to be on Facebook. And I think you could do either quick cash 
but I think you're going to have a bigger buyer pool on easier terms, right? So like when, when Eric and I started on Facebook two, three years ago, it was just a, a couple of us out there. It would take me 20 leads to get a sale and then 50 or 60 on Craigslist to get a sale. And that's really changed. You get, um, it'll take me a lot more Facebook leads, but I get them faster. So it's still the fastest way to sell, but I, I do need more leads to close the sale. There's just, um, and on the buy sell groups, you'll find a lot more tire kickers, but not as many on marketplace because people are becoming more savvy and they're more accustomed to seeing land now. Whereas before they'd never seen it two, three years in, they, they'll go out looking for land and I'll see my poster will even tell me, I know this person is a buyer because he's bought from other investors. So there are repeat buyers out in the Facebook marketplace market now that are very savvy with land investors, whereas two, three years ago. All right, great. So Eric Peterson, I bought it wholesale quickly, got all my marketing material, put it on Facebook. I sold it. Now I've got to close it right? What's the quickest and easiest way now to close that deal with your new retail buyer? Select the down payment via geek pay. Down and payment as well as doing the paperwork. Yeah. Um, so down payment doc fee via geek pay and uh, use LG pass to generate your docs and Something like sign now or write signature, DocuSign, et cetera, um, to have those documents electronically signed. Um, you should be able to finish that whole process in typically like a day if, you're, if your buyer is, um, you know, pretty proactive in terms of doing their portion. All right. Fantastic. Tate, you want the last word on this? Uh, I don't know what else I'd add. I mean, Eric kind of nailed it. Just, you know, be transparent when it comes to either buying or selling wholesale. Everybody needs to win in that situation. If, if everybody's not winning and everybody's not happy, it's not a good deal. Um, but, you know, that trust that you gain, uh, Mimi said that she worked with Mike at first and then she's worked with other people and she'd probably rather work with Mike again over a lot of these other people she's done deals with. I know I'm that way because, you know, I trust Mike. I don't even necessarily do a whole lot of due diligence when it comes to buying land from him. It's like, here's the price. Cool. There's no, we don't beat each other up because I know he's given me the best deal possible. And the reason he's given me that deal uh, as low as possible is because he knows I'm going to commit to it within the next hour or two. And that right there is, it's kind of the beauty of how buying or selling wholesale really works. So, yeah, it's the, it's the quick nickel over the slow dime and money loves speed for sure. And now we're at that point in the podcast where we get to put Mike Zeno on the spot, but of course he's getting bailed out again <laughs> by Mimi Schmidt to do her tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, Maybe a quote, something actionable for the our passive income listeners to go improve their business, improve their lives. Mimi, what do you got? Well, I, ha I made a video for my VA when, um, when I'm ready to start marketing a property. He has to make some pictures of the, the lot lines, right? Of the plat map or, you know, print screens off of Google Earth or that kind of thing. And uh, I was using paint. And so he was having to print screen paste it in paint, cut it out and save it. And you guys may have a similar app. This is called LightShot and you can download it onto Mac or Windows. And all you do is you press print screen, not even control or shift print screen. You press print screen, you drag the picture and say, press save. So there, if there are others that you guys use that you like to uh, just, you know, let's talk about it. But, but that it was so much easier. I have to make a new video for my VA to do my marketing maps. Wow. That's awesome. I mean, it's something that clever I'm surprised is even available for windows, but that's amazing that it is. So what do you guys use? Come on, Eric. Eric. <laughs> I like sketch. Have you ever used sketch? Is it similar? Yeah. All right. So 
sometimes. Scott Todd, have you lost your stylus yet on the surface? Um, no, in fact, I have it right here. You know why, Mark? Because it's magnetic and you just go plop and it's right there. And let me take <laughs> the tablet, the surface tablet. It is so dang good. It's like I barely touched it the other day and it didn't even, like I wonked it hard and it didn't barely even moved. I was just like, loss? No. no. Listen, listen, I know for a fact, I know for a fact that the Mac is out the door and there will be more just like me converting. You watch, you mark my words. Well, we'll see. We'll take a poll at boot camp. We, we can take a poll. We, it, listen, it might take one person at a time. If I'm the only one out there preaching it, no problem. I will keep preaching it because the cool kids use the good technology. Let me tell you what happened to me the other day. So that about my, Max. I fire up my old Mac because I, I got to get something off of it. I'm sitting there. I'm trying to do something. Guess what? It locked up. My, my surface? Months. No locks up. Nothing, man. Nothing. Caroline Aaron? I don't know, man. Hey, Speechless. Uh, Speechless. <laughs> no, the, the, see, a lot of people have, remember when Macs started to get good and we were all telling people, no, oh, you got to get rid of Windows and get a Mac. It's like you won't believe the experience. But everybody was kind of stiff-necked about it because it's like, oh, I've already got all this you know, I paid for the software. I've got my QuickBooks and my Excel and my whatever for my Windows machine. And now I'd have to buy new software. And it's like, well, same. Now it's the other way around. You know, I don't want to have to buy all new software for a Windows machine. I'll, I think I'll stick Mac out for a little bit longer and see how their, uh, see, see what their vision is, you know, kind of the combination between iOS and Mac OS, it's starting to come together. So it's not. I think, listen, if you use office, Microsoft office 365, it just converts over. There's no buying software anymore. If you're buying software that doesn't convert between different platforms, you're using the wrong stuff, man. And <laughs> Apple has no vision. I saw in Tampa that there's going to be a Microsoft Surface meetup at the Cheesecake Factory tonight. <laughs> well, I, I expect Scott, that there's you are the one leading this. I won't be there, but I'm sure you guys will be. Cheesecake. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you you need about five to six thousand calories for your mind to start even to like process slowly enough the the Kluge software. Of, of windows <laughs> it's, it's like okay. when they give you donuts at the dealership hey now let's make a deal how's it how's it going writing on your uh, macbook like when you when you need to take notes you like you take out a sharpie and you just use it there on a piece of paper <laughs> God, i'm not in grades i'm not in school anymore i type everything i'm an adult yeah okay <laughs> all right that's good that's good good it's good it's called the track pad <laughs> Well, on that Track note, that. I would have... They put out price, dude. That's a separate device, right, Bearland? Yeah, but it, it goes with me to any computer I want to use. Oh, Eric's okay. got one, too, I bet, don't you? I don't, actually. No trackpad. Oh, well, don't? Oh my <laughs> Other gosh. than on my MacBook. But not a separate one. You don't have a separate one, Okay. Well, I, I want to thank probably. the uh, Land Geek Nation for putting up with us and listening to us and supporting us. And if you're getting value from these podcasts, send it to a friend, email it to a friend, share it on the interwebs and social media. We really appreciate it. And of course, support the podcast by just doing three tiny little things. You got to subscribe. You got to rate. You got to review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 Passive Income Launch Kit. Again, check out the first season of LOTS. Go to thelandgeek.com forward slash LOTS, L-O-T-S. And of course, learn more about Flight School Live. Get her done in three days. Thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Are we, are we good, Roundtable? We ready to do this? Yeah.
All right. I'm going to try it this time. Uh-oh. Wow. All right. So we'll be ready for that lag. One, <laughs> two, three. Let's let's freedom, 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 freedom. That was so bad that Eric literally <laughs> went in pain. He physically <laughs> winced in pain. I've never seen it. That was really bad. If, if they really want to hear bad. it, they're going to come to boot camp, Mark, because there's nothing like that live. That, that's true. That's true. And boot, yeah, the next boot camp is going to be in Tate's backyard, Vegas. What happens at boot camp stays at boot camp. <laughs> Only at the Vegas boot camp, really. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be know. fun, though. It'll be a nice time. The pool will be warm. The sun will be out. Oh. Warm it. Well, how, how's it get in August? End of July. Know. End of July. After 100, it, it's all the same, basically. It's just going to be hot. You just got to come prepared knowing you're going to be hot. Yeah. I did at Phoenix right. last summer. That was yeah. great. It was that hot, 110. I love it, though. I'd rather it be 110 than, than still frozen, right? Like, I've been in shorts. How long have you been wearing short sleeve shirts, Mark? Did you even wear a long sleeve this year? I don't have any. I don't own any. I yeah. don't need any. No, just, maybe I do. I do. I'm joking. <laughs> I do. No, I, I've, I've, I've been starting the short sleeve thing since it cracked, you know, over 80. But what's yeah. funny is my, my wife is like, look, we're wearing short sleeve, you know, eight months out of the year. She's like, please, please wear long sleeve when you can. I'm like, okay, I will. Because yeah. she gets tired of seeing me in the same clothes. I, don't know. I know about that. Yeah. So, all right. Well, I'm really excited to see everybody um, for boot camp. Bearland, Aaron, you will be missed as always. I will miss but, everybody. Quite some, quite a bit. But everyone else, we're going to party like rock stars as usual this weekend. And uh, Mike, you bringing the, the cowboy boots or no? Because it's. Uh, well, it is Arizona. You're right. It is Arizona. That, that qualifies as cowboy boot nation. Maybe. It is, it is Southwest. I don't know. Tate, in Vegas, do they wear cowboy boots? During the rodeo, yeah. During the rodeo? I mean, in Vegas. It, you can Maybe wear or not wear whatever you want. It's totally fine. That that's true. I feel like because of Eric in, in Tennessee, like he'll feel more comfortable if you bring the cowboy boots. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> even though I don't own a pair. Well yeah, at least even, the yeah. hat. At least the hat. Then you have a hat. I do have a new hat. I have a new hat for boot camp. Yes. It's not a cowboy hat though. All right. All right. Well, oh. thanks, everybody. And uh, we'll see everyone next week. Probably very tired post boot camp, which is always kind of fun. But we'll, we'll tell some, some Zeno stories for sure. Javelinas. The Javelinas. Oh, don't bring those up. Those, those are scary. They're blind. Do you know that? They're like blind pigs. Yes. Well, you can't even, you know, I would never run into one because I can't go into the wild in Arizona because every plant attacks you. So I'll never get attacked by javelina because I won't even step foot off the pavement because everything out there bites you. All these prickers and, oh, forget it. Yeah. No get, danger. Yeah. Stay out of it. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, not, it's not like Florida. Like, you got to be tough to live out here, you know? <laughs> I mean, do you do you see the news that all the Florida men? I mean, we got to survive amongst them. <laughs> I mean, it's like World on, War Z, uh, World War Z of Florida. Come on, I, I feel like that should be like a, like a Netflix show, Florida man. We got to survive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like the zombie apocalypse, except instead of it's like just Florida man. Oh, it's it is uh it is it, it is interesting when you hear uh like it is interesting when you hear stories that you're like ah oh, that's over there that's somewhere else. but then when they hit like close to your home you're like whoa that was pretty close just the other day there was uh it wasn't Florida a Florida man it was Florida women three Florida women they um they they go to a rest stop uh interstate rest area that is literally like in my town. And they, they go there and apparently they had like got kicked out of the house that they were living at or something like 
some altercation. I don't know. They end up at the rest area. They spend the night. And you know what? They need to shower. So you know what they do, right? Like they do what any other normal person would do who's in that situation. They, at the rest stop, they strip off their clothes and they take gallon bottles of water and they start bathing out there uh, at the rest stop next to the interstate. And then when the police show up, they do what anybody <laughs> would do which is they get in the car and they flee from the police with no clothes on okay and then then they go and they create a ruckus in the town like they they got a police chase after them because they ran from the police and they're like what's the problem we don't we're just showering here whoa that's scary like in Vegas, wow. this is a Cirque du Soleil show. Like we would, it, we would it, sell. That's it. oh, it happens right on the strip every day. I've seen it, but like, it's acceptable. It's a, <laughs> a big conclusion. Who did they make it? The, you know, we don't want that crap here. Weren't they arrested at the Cheesecake Factory? The final scene of that whole thing. Uh, apparent, apparently, allegedly, allegedly they were in the Cheesecake Factory. I don't know. No, no proof of that though. Okay, but they did not make it to Panera Bread. I'll tell you that. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, this is always fun, isn't it? It's just good times. All right. Well, I'm going to go uh, eat some lunch and uh, get ready for boot camp. Thanks, everybody. Mm -hmm.